good morning my dear friends or uh, good afternoon if you are watching on a different time zone and participating today is mass of friday friday the octave of easter in this mass we continue to pray for you and pray for your families we bring the intentions you have for yourself and for people you love and for people you concern about we bring all of them to the altar of God's mercy. We pray for those who are struggling at this time. I know there are many people whose lives will never be the same again. I pray for them. I pray for you. Pray and ask that God's grace may help you see a path forward. That there is hope even when everything seems hopeless. As we will see from the readings today. I pray for parents who have children struggling with physical or mental disabilities at a time like this because that is added stress pray that god may be with them and that god may give them grace for patience tolerance and for acceptance i pray for parents of young children mothers who were just delivered of their babies i know a lot of them at this time I pray that God may bless them, God may watch over them and watch over their children and keep them safe at this time of great danger. I pray for those who have lost their jobs, those who are unemployed, those who are in fear of losing their jobs, those who can barely feed their families. Pray for people who are just in, in total fear and panic at this time because of everything that is around us. Pray for our sick, pray especially for those who are very sick from this virus. Pray that the Holy Spirit of God, the breath of life, may breathe into their lungs, expand those lungs, free those lungs, and just let those lungs perform as they were created too. Pray for our doctors, nurses, medical workers. Pray for all those who are risking their lives every day. For also that God may bless their efforts with results. I also don't want to forget all those who are suffering from other diseases. I pray especially for the family of the wounded warrior, the Avilas. I pray that God may bless them at this time, that God may keep them safe at this time. I pray for my patients. Pray that God may help them find quick healing and quick recovery. Pray for those who are in harm's way right now, people who are victims of abuse or exploitation. Someone right now is in risk of their lives, not for this disease, but for something else completely. That God may be with them, that they are not forgotten. For this Mass, our opening hymn will be Jesus Christ's reason today. I also invite you to bring all your intentions and place them on the altar of God's love and mercy. Jesus Christ is risen today. Oh, hallelujah. Earth and heaven go in chorus say, Oh, Joys and triumphs, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Sing ye heavens and earth, reply. Oh, hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My dear friends, to prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins, ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to hear the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, 
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us say the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who gave us the Paschal mystery in the covenant you established for reconciling the human race, so dispose our minds, we pray, that what we celebrate by professing the faith we may express in deeds by what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. My dear friends, our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After the crippled man had been cured, Peter and John, still speaking to the people, the priest, the captain of the, of the temple guard, and the Sadducees, confronted them, disturbed that they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They laid hands on Peter and John and put them in custody until the, day, the next day, since it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word came to believe, and the number of men grew about 5,000. On the next day, their leaders, elders, and scribes were assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and all who were the high priestly class. They brought them into their presence and questioned them. By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, answered them, leaders of the people and elders, if, you are, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what names or by what means he was saved. Then all of you and all the people of Israel should know this, that it was in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is a stone rejected by you, the builders, who has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is Alleluia. Give thanks to the Lord for he is God. For his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Hallelujah. O Lord, grant salvation. O Lord, grant prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God. 
and he has given us light. Hallelujah. 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 This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together with Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, We also will come with you. So they went out and got into a boat. But that night, they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it, and they were unable to pull in everything because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from the shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with, with the fish. When they climbed out on the shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore, full of a hundred and fifty-three large fish. Even though there were so many, the nets was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them. Likewise, the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after he was being raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I'd like to reflect with you this morning from the Gospel reading. There are a few things that stand out to me. Um, at a time like this. I think I'd like to begin with Peter. And I'd I like to take our minds back to when Peter and John were told by Mary that they have taken the Lord. Remember, they ran to the tomb. And they said, the Bible said that one disciple ran, ran faster than Peter, and that disciple was John. That he got to the tomb first, but did not go in. Then Peter came, went into the tomb, and then the other disciples also did. Peter left. They didn't tell us about the status of his faith when he left. But the emphasis was, this other disciple who got there first saw and believed. That means he believed that the Lord was alive. He saw and believed. Peter saw. They didn't tell us what, whether there was an ascent of faith, 
or rather there was just no response at all. Now, Peter definitely had a much difficult time, you know, getting himself around to the side of faith. Because don't forget, Peter had denied Jesus three times, and there was no opportunity to apologize, to say I'm sorry. There was no opportunity to do that. Yes, so he, I believe he still had all of that baggage, making it more difficult for him to love. For one who is more guilty, the guilt makes it difficult for you to love, for you to accept even forgiveness. So Peter is still, I believe, is still dealing with all of this. It, it, it is still affecting his relationship with the Lord. Now, you realize that this, the apostles also had a quarantine. And for the period of quarantine, you don't do much. That means you have more time to obsess with your guilt, with everything you don't like to deal with. And sometimes hanging around people who remind you of things that you would wish you forgot. Now, you can't do a lot. You can't, you can't disappear into a busy lifestyle and, and, and forget all of those things. That time is given to you sometimes to just get in touch with yourself and, and recognize yourself for who you are and know yourself completely differently. But it's also a very scary time because that's exactly what we don't want to do. So we get ourselves busy with a lot of things. So I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to see how Peter was so bored with dealing with everything, his denial, dealing with the fact that he went to the tomb and could not believe. There was so much, I believe, was going through his life at this time. Now, in psychologically as human beings, when we are uncomfortable, when we are distressed, we begin to fall back into behavior or behavioral patterns that we are comfortable with. We, we want to find a comfortable place, a place of comfort. So very naturally, we fall back to and normal patterns, and normal behavior, things we once did, things we we find we can get ourselves into. Now, don't forget, Peter and the disciples were afraid of the Jews, but Peter was willing to go fishing. So he was beginning to go back to patterns of behavior that he was used to. So when you are uncomfortable and you see yourself sneaking, suddenly doing things that you never did before for a long time, that tells you, don't focus on what you are doing right now. Focus on why you are doing this. There's something else going on inside you that is forcing you either to do something you've never done for a long time, like say a bad word to your spouse or beat up your child or just do something out of character. What is going on inside you that is making you do all of this? Whatever else you are doing, like Peter going fishing, you're looking for an escape. Peter was looking for an escape from being obsessed with his own guilt, his sense of um, not being good enough, not even worthy being here with, this, with, the, with, the, with the disciples because he felt he had failed so much. Now, Jesus knows exactly what is going on inside Peter's life, that he is going to drift if not, not stopped, that he is going to drift because he cannot face what he has done. Judas went and killed himself. Peter may not have killed himself, but very likely Peter would have walked away from the Apostle College. And so he begins with behavior that he was used to, and suddenly he would have graduated to something else if not stopped. But I'm also excited that the other apostles chose to go with him. I'm thinking, what if others did not go with him and they allowed Peter? Because Peter said, I am going fishing. He didn't invite them. He says, I am going fishing. What if others didn't go with him? Maybe Peter won't come back. Maybe that would have a need. And, and so this also says to me, when we see someone in distress, when we see that someone is distressed, stay with them. Be their friend at that time. You might be the reason why they stay alive that time. You might be the reason why they held on that time. You might be the reason why something worse did not happen. I am believing that the fact that these others chose to go with Peter 
That was the saving grace for Peter. Granted, maybe the Lord was still saving him. But they chose to stay close with him. Because Peter was already making up his mind on what to do. Maybe slowly to walk away and to move away from the others. But thank God, they said, we will go with you. We will not leave you alone at a time like this. Because we know that your behavior is changing. We are seeing some differences in you. We will stay with you. So maybe there's someone in your family right now whose behavior is changing. Who is acting out in different ways than you know them to do. That's not time to let them alone, to be there by themselves. That's time to find out. I see this about you. Is everything okay? I'm concerned. That's what the disciples did. But the Lord was also concerned. And so he goes to the, Tiber the Sea of Tiberias. I was in this place last year, about this time. I remember, you know, um, being at that, that sea um, with a group of um, pilgrims. And so the Lord goes ahead. He knows where the disciples are going to disembark. And back. So he goes ahead and arrives there before them. Now, there are several miracles right here after the Lord's resurrection. First, I, I'm not sure the Lord had money. He didn't have money when he died. But he was able to find, get some bread. So that must have been a miracle. He didn't have a net or a hook. But he had fish. So that was also a miracle. He must have prepared. And then he didn't have matches, you know, match to, to get fire. So he must have done something to get fire. So that was another miracle. And he had firewood. There are wood. There is wood in that, that area. So he must have gathered the wood. And he becomes a chef. Now, this is the savior. If this is the master of life, he becomes a chef. He prepares the food, knowing that the disciples be hungry, knowing they have got nothing. So when they arrive, he asks them, did you guys catch anything? He said, no. Why not? Yeah, Jesus wanted to also remind Peter, all right, that don't forget what happened three years ago. That God you saw three years ago, that Lord you saw three years ago did not change. Who gave you the most miraculous catch you have ever had in your life? He has not changed three years after. Not even death changed him. That's what Jesus wanted Peter to realize. And all of that was to get Peter realigned again with his faith because Peter was drifting. He had to realign Peter with his faith. He says, that man you saw, that you said, Lord, leave me alone. I'm a sinner. I'm unworthy. That man is still the same man today. Death did not change him. Death only revealed who he was. And, and realized when he said, for them to cast the net. The exact same thing that happened three years ago happened again. They came out with this great catch that they have never seen before. Jesus realized that Peter was in danger of drinking. And then came Jesus. He showed up for him. I know Jesus cares about every one of us and he would minister to us on our own needs. That was the fourth miracle, the, the catch. And after the miracle, you realize he invites them to come and have breakfast. Now, the Lord prepared breakfast for his disciples. The Lord is going to prepare breakfast for us right here, right now, on this altar. Yeah, all of us may not be able to receive it physically, but every one of us is going to receive it spiritually. The Lord is going to prepare breakfast for us right now. And the disciples came and ate the breakfast. Now, you realize that so much was happening here. This gospel ends at verse 14. When you go to verse 16, following, immediately after, to tell you that Jesus knew Peter was drifting. He says to Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? So Jesus knew that Peter was drifting, was not certain, was no longer sure, if he wanted to stay. And so the Lord had to reconfirm to Simon, son of John, do you love me? Do you love me more than all these others? Why would you think that those questions were answered, were asked? And, and realize the third time the Bible said, 
Peter was getting upset. Why was he upset? Because Peter knew why the Lord was asking this question. You know the times when maybe your spouse offends you and you ask them about the offense. Normally they react sometimes with anger, especially when you are insisting because you are triggering something that they would wish they forgot. So that's what was happening to Peter here. Now, we can, we can relate a lot with what was going on in Peter's life. Maybe that's where we are right now. We bore. We're beginning to go back into certain behaviors that may push us away from the Lord. But this is time to stay with someone who is doing that. This is time to also recognize that our Lord, we serve an awesome God who is not just powerful and super abundantly gracious, but who also cares about the little things that happen to us like a breakfast. He cares about every need we have. I pray, dear friends, that as we worship God from this altar today, that God may, may meet your needs and may surprise and amaze you, just let you know that you are blessed to have Jesus as your Lord and your King. As always, I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you that the Lord loves you very much and that you are the delight of the Almighty God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Most merciful God, what an amazing and loving God that you are. You know how to come to us at moments where we have reached our breaking point. You come to us at such moments and show us the extraordinary power of your grace. I pray for all, every one of your child right now one of your children right now, Lord God, who is struggling, who is at that breaking point. I beg you, Almighty God, to reveal yourself powerfully in their lives. May they feel the strength of your grace flowing from this altar to meet every need of yours. I pray for those who are in fear at this time, Lord God. I pray that you may dispel their fears, you may dispel their anxieties, that you may dispel their frustrations, and help them recognize that there is still a plan forward beyond this valley. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, dear God, for those who are giving up faith. There are so many who are questioning their faith at this time. Like Peter, they are beginning to drift into other, in other things. They are finding you absent in their life because they had certain desires they hope you would meet. I beg you, Almighty God, that you be with them too. Help them recognize that their lives is a gift. Forever, their life will be a gift from you to them. And that you, the giver, have everything to take care of those lives and to provide for their needs. And that they should fear nothing but be in love and stay in love with you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those whose intentions haven't given this morning. Maybe you typed your intentions or you just rephrase them in your heart that God may accept all of them, that God may bless all of them, that you may see quick results and quick turnaround very, very soon. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have asked our prayers. Pray for our doctors and nurses. Pray for our leaders. Pray especially for those who are so sick at this time. I like to pray for my nurses and my doctors who are just stressed under the circumstances and every doctor and nurse who is stressed at this time. Pray dear God for a renewed sense of grace and strength and courage that we may stay healthy in this fight. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, hear these concerns we have lifted before you. Please accept them and grant all the others that your people are bringing in your hearts to you, wherever they are. Please accept, bless, and grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed be thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, and human hands have made in the common bread of life. Blessed be God for all. Blessed be thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual being. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Perfect within us, O Lord, we pray, the solemn exchange brought about by these paschal offerings, that we may be drawn from earthly desires to a longing of the things of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is a true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. And by rising, he has restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are clean. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Timothy Broglio, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants who have died from this virus, O God. Remember our loved ones who are dying from every other cause of death. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep 
in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, to the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence using the words our Lord gave us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant all peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. My dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of God's peace. And so from me to you and your families, peace of Christ be with you all. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers. Look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold our bread of life, our Savior. He takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be free. Now for spiritual communion. The Lord is ready to provide us our breakfast or our lunch wherever we are. Open your hearts and invite him in to your life, in to your home. Gracious God, today you revealed yourself to your apostles and you provided them nourishment prepared by your own hands. I beg you, dear God, that you may reach out to every desiring and expecting soul and family out there right now, worshiping you. May you nourish and meet their every need, O oh God. May your presence in their lives and their home be the source of great courage and strength at this time of anxieties. We ask all of this through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen.
let us pray. Keep safe, O oh Lord. We pray you. Those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My dear friends, before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for joining, joining us at this Eucharistic celebration. I pray that like Peter's life was changed after this encounter, that your lives, the lives of people you care about and your families may also be changed because Jesus does care for every one of us. If you forget anything I said this morning, remember this, that you are the delight of the mighty God, and that God loves you very much. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our closing hymn, we will sing, Abide with me. Abide with me. Abide with me. Fast for the eventide, the darkness deepens, Lord with me abide, when all the help pass, fail and comforts flee, help all the helpless who abide with me. Swift to its close, ebbs out life's little day. Its joys grow dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. 